Hey everybody, I'm Georgia Rose, your soul sister for tonight. And did you see that moon outside? Boy, when I was driving to the studio tonight, I couldn't believe the moon in that sky. It was gorgeous. Got a full moon in Cancer coming in with a lunar eclipse. So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to pull some tarot cards tonight for each sign of the zodiac. So if you have any questions about uh, how this full moon is going to affect you, just call into the show and we'll see what comes up. So Sally, the full moon is in Cancer. Yeah, I was actually wondering if we had a full moon already or it was coming our way. It's actually tomorrow at 2.21 p.m. Okay. And it's igniting a lot of things that are going on in the world. So we're going to have a lot of personal changes. And Cancer is our security and family and home, the home within us. So there's going to be a lot of family stuff going on. I yeah, think. it feels it. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the air. Yeah, so I'm sure our friend John will call in tonight, maybe some newcomers. So I want to talk a little bit about the cancer energy because I'm seeing things on social media and people are texting me that they're feeling a lot of emotion, a lot of emotion. And um, <clears throat> that is actually cancer energy. Cancer is heart-based, so it's going to bring you into your heart chakra and kind of bring the emotions that you have up into your upper body and into the heart. And the reason it does that is because that's where we're supposed to live from. <laughs> Yeah, I thought like like I remember one time listening to a uh, kung fu guy, and he said you have to like like <coughs> right above your belly button is where you should like feel things. That's the solar plexus. That is definitely for um, for kung fu guys. Yeah, um, <laughs> if you open that, I'll share. Okay. So yeah, with kung fu and, and martial arts, they definitely want you to uh, feel things in the solar plexus because that's your power center, right above your belly button. But this energy coming in is a little further up than that. It's the heart chakra. So whatever's coming up for you, just know it's because the universe wants you to really think about that with your heart. And usually when the emotions come up, it's the clearing of the energy of our lower chakras coming into ascension. So the lower chakras are usually, you know, pain, jealousy, anger. You feel those in the lower chakras. So when we have heart energy coming in through... It's really a reminder of whatever situation comes up that you're supposed to be dealing with it from your heart. So let's see what Aries, our Aries friends out there. <coughs> let's see, um, and pardon me tonight because I have a little bit of a dry, sore throat. I've, I've been through this flu season unscathed thus far, so I'm trying to remain so. Have you been sick at all, Sal? No, but people are dropping like flies. I know, and usually I'm one of them. And this is the first year that I really don't have that happening. And I, I owe it all to spirit because... It's just karma. I have good karma, people. Like, I know people uh, that are in the hospital for pneumonia. It's like... Yeah, last year, uh, last year I had that over Christmas. Oh, so really? Let's, let's see what the cards are going to bring in for Aries. And Aries, I am going to pick three cards for each sign of the zodiac, and you are first. So, Aries, we have the Fool card in reverse. Queen of Cups on the end. So, Aries, you are on a journey. Aries, heart-based energy is hard for Arians because they live really in the solar plexus, that power center. Aries is a sign of the ram, and they like to go, 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 and pick up a lot of power as they do so. Anybody who is married or a partnership <laughs> with an Aries knows they are in control, or they think so. So, Aries, you are on a bit of a journey. This full moon is probably going to bring something out, a very feminine energy, which is what Cancer really is. Um, I think this is you getting in touch with your feminine side. I also see someone who is a water sign woman um, coming in and creating a little bit of mischief for you. But I think it all works out in the end. This also is a repetitive situation. It's something that's happened before. Uh, the full moon is actually an eclipse as well. And what eclipses do is they bring things to light. If you think about the moon coming into full illumination and then going dark for a moment and then coming back into full illumination it looks different and that is what eclipses do they make us look at situations and things that are come into the awareness of us during a full moon eclipse they make us look at it differently from the way we started out to look at it so for you Aries this has something to do with a water sign woman that would be um, a cancer um, I'm getting like cancer or Scorpio more than likely and this is a repetitive situation, something that's come up before, but you're going to see it differently by the end of the weekend. But there's going to be a little commotion on the weekend for this. So just know it, Aries. you got some woman out there causing a little bit of havoc in your life. But I think it's going to be okay. So 
If there's any questions or anything anybody has, you can put them in the comments or you can call in. Now, after Aries, we're going to do Taurus, the bull. The ram is followed by the bull. So, <laughs> <laughs> or vice versa, depending on the situation. So let's see what for Taurus, what ha we have for you for this beautiful full moon in Cancer. The other thing Cancer energy does is sometimes like to go in its shell. So, okay, Taurus energy, something's moving for you. A little activity lately. Um, this situation feels a little out of balance right now, but it's going to be balanced. And the, this reading, I would say, is probably for, I'm going to say the next five to seven days. So, Aries, you're thinking of something in a really, I mean, Taurus, I'm sorry. You're thinking of something in a really big picture when you need to pull it in and look at it a little bit smaller. Um, this isn't about the larger picture of things like looking down the road too far. It's not about the future really far ahead. This is about today. So kind of pull in what you're feeling a little bit. A lot of activity. I feel like this is a battle that you've been in, but this is the last battle. It's like you're in a little bit of a, t uh, a tug of war or a war, and there's one more thing you have to resolve before you get to the end, and this is it. And you have to balance it. It's definitely out of balance, but you have the potential to balance it. But rein it in a little bit, because whatever the situation coming in the next couple of days or a couple of days since now is definitely something you're going too far out in the future with. you got to pull it in and look at what's happening really now and just resolve today's issue, not an issue that's going to come up three years from now. That's my advice for you. Taurus is out there. Any yeah, I have to. Any I have questions? To, I have to speak for the for the Taurians in the world. Yeah, it, it that actually. I hope that's just. It sounds like great advice, so I hope it works out because I feel like, I feel like that's even before this week. I felt like that's where I was, and like the new year, I kind of it kind of had this feeling like, I really should live more day to day instead of you know you know like you always say to yourself, why are you always in the past or in the future, and yeah. you really should be more yeah. centered. And I've. It's hard to you do. You always think that, but I really kind of felt like the last couple of weeks I've been I've been happy to try to do that. Like it seemed like the right way to go. There you go. See, your instincts are perfect. So I'm I'm hoping, but you know, when you're in panic state, you you flip back to who you were. <laughs> right, right. But you know, Sally, that panic state comes because of the thinking about the past or the future, because that's what anxiety is. We can't have anxiety when we're totally in the present moment, because there's nothing to be afraid of right now. Right. So when our brain bounces back and forth, that's when the anxiety comes in. Okay. So it's interesting that the cards came out for you like that. Because the first card is like you, you know, yeah, kind of looking at... Yeah, explain the cards. Out. Yeah, the first card is like the looking at... This card is very significant of looking out at the world. You've got the world in the palm of your hand, that kind of thing. Yeah, I feel like, and, like I'm responsible for everyone forever. Right. You know? And so you need to kind of take that back a step and say, you know what? I'm not responsible for everyone forever. I'm responsible for myself today. Yeah. And just rein it back in, even though you have children and, and spouses and all kinds of people to deal with. And then this card is a card of action. And usually when I see this card, it to me, um, traditionally in tarot, this is something that's of a competitive nature. And so, you know, if you have a, a relationship that's competitive, it's gonna, this card is going to come up. But in this particular reading for me, it really is symbolizing a past battle, all these wands, all these rods that you see here, a past battle, and now you've got the last hurdle to go through with it. But if you look at all these wands... The, this card has the wands growing leaves. They're like branches on trees. So that means there's new beginnings there if you really look at the situation in a different way. Okay. So that's for every Taurus out there is really the advice. And then this is the balance card, which is in the reverse position, which means we haven't achieved it yet. Yeah. But it's, it's there. It's available to you. It's obtainable. You think it's... Um, but why, what makes you say just like the next like five, seven days or so? Because that's how I feel this energy. That's just my psychic energy tapping into world energy. And I feel like this phase that the lunar eclipse and full moon is igniting. It's igniting the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which will be with us throughout the year. But it's also in trying to Neptune. And when it trines Neptune, that is deep healing energy. That's like water it's like, I'll be very surprised if towards the end of the week or in the next few days or over the weekend, like in give or take that five day span, we don't hear that the wildfires in Australia are becoming under control, things like that. <clears throat> because when this energy trines Neptune, it's going to bring in water. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why I feel like the phase for me, just looking at what the planet's doing and some of the transits that are happening in the next week, I feel like that's 
the time frame of the energy, like things will be resolved, especially once we start trining Neptune because that brings in healing. Okay. Yeah. I'm picking up. <laughs> that was hysterical. That was really funny. Hello. Welcome to the show. Hello, Liz. How are you? Oh, oh, hey, Dennis. How was your day today at Gov's Radio? Dennis, I almost oh chipped my, my tooth God. on the phone because of you. <laughs> I forgot I when I was fun. home. Dennis came in today and ate all of Chef Felix's food. I heard he was going to be on Felix's show, and I didn't see it because I was in a meeting. How'd that go? It was really good. I had a blast. Did you eat a lot? Oh, my God. The food was so good, and I brought some home. I hear he's a great cook, so that's why I ask, because I don't think he's ever had a bad, a bad food show. He doesn't cook. He gets people to bring in food from <laughs> everywhere and then just eats it all. It's eat, well, that's, that's the name of the show, which is? Let's eat. Let's eat. <laughs> yep. I got, I got some people watching you guys, too. You I do? have my cousin Mike. I have my cousin Mike watching you guys. Oh, hey, Mike. How you doing out there? Yeah, he's from New Jersey. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I had, some, I had my cousin watching you guys today, uh, earlier today. It was nice. We had a couple of other games. It was nice. Very good. So yep. you're going to let me do the uh, full moon tarot cards tonight or what? Yes, please do. Okay. Well, I'm up to Pisces. I don't know what uh, what sign are you. A Leo. We didn't get to you yet, Dennis. Do you have a question you want to ask? Yes. I want to know if I'm <laughs> going to be... I want to know I'm going to be in a long relationship I with my you, husband. I, I, I think you I, are, yeah. I definitely think you are. I feel like you have to, your husband needs a little freedom there. Like he kind of goes his own way and then comes back and goes his own way and comes back. That's good. Yeah, but he's definitely, uh, he's still, he's very loyal to you, but I feel like he needs a little bit of freedom. What sign is he? Leo too. Oh, that's right. You told me that once before, I think. Um Shows you what a psychic I am. I can't remember these things. <laughs> um, to, yeah, you have to give Leos their freedom. Leos can't feel like they're caged in. You know, the lion doesn't like that. So you have to let them roar. So so when we get to Leo, you tune in, okay? Thanks, Dennis. Have a good night. Yeah. Thanks for calling in, Dennis. Okay, so I'm on Pisces. And uh, do I have to, like, hang that up? Nope, got it. I locked it. I tried to answer the phone, and I almost chipped my tooth. Oh, don't do that. Because I forgot I had headphones on, and I thought I was at home answering the phone. But you, you, how did you forget you had teeth, though? Like, how'd that go? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's pretty funny. we got to play that one back. So Pisces, my little Pisces friends. Pisces, there's some kind of a delay with a celebration. I don't know what you're thinking to do, and hope you're not getting married. But um, you, this full moon eclipse brings in some kind of a delay with a celebration. Um, again, watery woman. This is definitely a water sign woman. I feel like that might be you, Pisces, listening out there, but that's definitely for someone. If not, your relationship with a water sign woman. Very mother-like energy. So whatever's been canceled, gosh, I hope it's not somebody's wedding, but um, it feels like a celebration of some kind canceled. I feel like this celebration is getting pushed, maybe postponed is a better word. I feel like it's getting pushed down the road. Um, and... Yeah, this celebration does take place, but I feel like it's going to be delayed six to eight months. I don't know why that's coming in. It's just what Spirit's showing me. And I feel like this is some kind of a feminine celebration. So it's either like a baby shower, bridal shower, wedding, something. It could be a christening, but I feel like it's very, a lot of feminine energy tied into this. And that's just the way the Cancer Moon is showing to me. So, um, so Pisces, don't be upset if something has been delayed because it, it's not canceled. It may seem canceled, but it's not. It's definitely a delay. Six to eight months, this will get picked back up. almost feel like it's uh, something to do with illness. Maybe somebody that was supposed to be doing the party or doing the celebration somehow is ill or whatever. But it definitely gets picked up. So Pisces, when the uh, full moon eclipse comes in, if it looks like your plans are going awry, don't lose heart. Because it's just a postponement. It's just a glitch. Everything does work out okay. All right. So we got some comments here. Hi, Marianne. Hi, RJ. David Gaspari. He's a Capricorn. We're going to get to that. Just out of curiosity, <clears throat> why did you go um, from like Aries to Taurus to Pisces? It's just the way I do the Zodiac wheel. You know, the different signs. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I wanted to say, because someone just came online, a top fan, Dennis Murphy. And he, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, David Gaspari. Uh, Capricorn. 
Capricorns are really feeling this. Uh, this is happening. This full moon lunar eclipse is happening right across the sky from Capricorn. And Capricorn right now is right in that whole conglomeration of planets. Pluto, Saturn, there's like four or five planets in Capricorn right now all playing around and the south node and the moon, which is our karma, past, that, etc. So for Cappies, this is a really auspicious time. It is a time when it's great to plan what really resonates with you and what the way you really want your life to be. And it's also a time that um, things that fall away are because they're really not authentic to you. So don't be too upset about that. All right. So we did Pisces, okay. I'm gonna do Aquarius. Doing this a little funky, but that's okay. No, it's okay, it's interesting. So Aquarius. This is interesting, very interesting. Okay, Aquarius, I see this moon bringing in a lot of activity for you. And one of the things that happens out right after the, on the heels of this full moon, um, I think it's maybe Sunday or Monday, Full moon is on Friday, tomorrow, 2.21 p.m. Uranus touches a point in the sky where it really affects a lot of the things the full moon brought in. And Uranus is sudden, unexpected change. It's lightning, but it's also the ruling sign of Aquarius. So for you Aquarians, you're going to feel a lot of activity after this full moon lunar eclipse. Starting like Saturday night into Sunday, Monday, it's almost like life starts to really accelerate for Aquarians. And this is new energy. It's innovative. I do feel specifically, Aquarians, that there's someone who is a Libra that's, a, that's coming in in a very... Uh, almost like you've been waiting for this energy for a long time. It's either a business partnership or a romantic partnership. So Aquarians, watch for a Libra energy coming in for you. Um, and I, this could be resurrected energy from a past love, but I also feel very greatly that you've been waiting for this. So Aquarians, you've got some Libra energy coming in. Life is really going to pick up after this full moon. Just know that. And whatever comes to the surface Friday, Saturday, let it play out a little bit later into, you know, next week because there's going to be a lot of changes. Things might seem a certain way now or in the next day or so. That's going to flip over. So go slow. Really observe things. You know, um, look at really what you what you want your outcome to be and try and manifest that by keeping your thoughts positive. Okay, Aquarians? And, um, oh, you're welcome, David. Um, so Angelique wants to know what's happening with Libras. We're going to get to Libra. Okay, so we did Aries, we did Pisces, we did, oops, we did Aquarius, and we did Taurus. So what am I doing next? I'm doing Gemini. <clears throat> and also, if you have any planets that it, are um, 20 degrees to 25 degrees of any cardinal sign, which is Aries, Capricorn, Libra, um, Cancer, any, any planets in those signs, you're going to feel this a little deeper too. Okay, so Gemini. It's very hard for Geminis to focus a lot of times because Gemini is a very airy energy. You know, it's energy that likes is easily distracted. But right now, you have the opportunity, Gemini, to really focus more than you ever have before. And I feel like this is focus on merging your material world with your spiritual world. And this star card came up, which is one of the, actually, actually one of the uh, most benevolent cards in the tarot deck. And it's really, if you look at the card, it's, it looks as though this beautiful woman is taking water out of out of a jug and, and and filling it and then putting it in the earth and it's indicative of the, what what as above so below so you have your spiritual life merging into your earthbound life and for gemini that's difficult because gemini's don't merge they they're very phonetic sometimes brilliant conversationalist brilliant about many things can retain information you'll never be bored around a gemini they're just brilliant that way but not someone who can really sit and be introspective. They find it hard to meditate oftentimes. Well, how long will this last? Um, For those of us who deal with Geminis. I think, I think this <laughs> Eric's time... Eric's a Gemini. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think this time period will actually last a while back and forth be during eclipse season, which can be anywhere from 6 to 18 months. Oh, good for him. So I think, tw <laughs> let's say 2020 is a great year for Gemini. This full moon lunar eclipse will ignite a more spiritual kind of energy where they want to ground 
And Geminis never want to ground. They want to go after the shiny balloon in the sky. So this is an energy that will find it easier to ground in. So if you are a Gemini or around a Gemini, I would really try meditation. You're going to find it much easier now than at other times in your life. And this is also a time when things that are non-conforming, um, the things that are, because the other card that came up was the High Priestess. And I feel like if in, in relation to Eric, I feel like this is you, the High Priestess. Because this is someone who's super spiritual, a little into the occult, you know, and, and really very heart-based energy. So when this card comes up for me in a reading with the star card, this is deep revelation. This is transformation. This is, you know, you Geminis out there really seeing things differently in a way that you never have before. And this card is a card of quiet repose. And that's the way you connect. And for Geminis, it's almost... It's almost excruciating. They'd rather die 10,000 painful deaths than have to sit in a chair or, or lie down and just be quiet. So that, But that's what the universe wants them to do. So during this full moon lunar eclipse, I think you Geminis need to kind of go in the house and relax, you know, take a warm bath and just try to like get yourself in a state of repose because you will have revelations about your spirituality and about some of the things that are much deeper and more substantial than the things you're usually thinking about Geminis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now I'm going to do Cancer. Cancer, this is happening in your home sign for all you Cancer babies out there. Cancers, you are going to really feel this. Um, I'm, I'd be very surprised if anyone who's a Cancer out there and you call into the show and you tell me you're not emotional, I'm going to call you liar, liar, pants on fire. Because Cancers are really emotional during this particular full moon lunar eclipse. So do not go in your shell. Um, Cancer's like that. You know, you poke a crab, and what do they do? They run into their little shelly. So, Cancer, you're having emotion because you're supposed to deal with it, not go in the shell. Okay? I'm just telling you that right out. Okay, Cancers. Cancel. The Cancer card came up. King of Cups. <laughs> so... And this just counts for sun sign in Cancer, not like rising sun in Cancer. Yeah, you can listen to, you can cross watch. You know, okay. like if you're a, a Capricorn moon, you can watch Capricorn, you know, um, whatever you're comfortable with. But this is sun signs. So uh, Cancer, what I'm going to tell you right now is I don't know what's going on in your life. Uh, yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> 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 so, oh, here's a Cancer now. No. <laughs> Oh, I did it again. <laughs> Don't hit your face. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the show. Hi, Zakuda. welcome to the show. <laughs> hello, Sally. Hello. Georgia. You again. Just wanted to say hello. You guys are killing me with this phone tonight, but I'm glad you're called in. Hi, Mr. Capricorny. How are you? How are you? How are you doing? It's funny that you call in when I'm doing cancer, because wait till you hear what I have to say about cancer. Oh, wow. Yeah. I will be listening. It's <laughs> that is funny because that wasn't planned. Trust me. It was not planned, Trust and I'm getting all these downloads about cancer. And I was just going to say on air that yeah. cancer is their own worst enemy, and that they can't is see the they can't see the far, forest for the trees, and they've given up something they really shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's amazing. <laughs> I know that's so funny. And then you call. I'm like, wait a second. Now I know why I'm getting this. What's up? Okay. How are you, John? You feeling is. you feeling this energy or what? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's just, it's just, it's, it's a lot of feelings, a lot of stuff going on. Oh, and tell me about it. it. It's all good though. It's all it good, is. Though. And you know, it's I have, good. I have my own theory. I think that the reason why this Cancer Moon is bringing in so much emotion for people is because, like I had said to Sally at the top of the show, we we have a tendency to live in our lower chakras. You know, the like the hurt, the anger, the frustration. That's all energy we carry low. And I feel mm -hmm. like the Cancer Moons, especially this one with the lunar eclipse, I feel like the energy comes in deliberately so that our energy rises to the heart and we raise up and we become more ascent, assertive and ascend, we ascend. And that's really uh -huh. where, where we're supposed to live is from our heart. But all oh, those, yeah. yeah, and all those lower emotions kind of have to come up to get cleared out. So for me, the Cancer Moon is really beautiful because in the end, I think we're all going to have deep healing. Oh. Okay, I go with that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So well, have that's you, why I called in just to say hello. Well, I have <laughs> to you know ask you. Listening. I have to ask you yep. a question. Have you had yep. any kind of signs this week that were very, you know, prominent in in your life, or had anything happen that was kind of you felt like it was a sign for something? Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. And you know, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. 
I, you know, I've been thinking about a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff comes in and out of my mind. Yeah. You know, as I me- as I meditate, because I'm big on the meditating, as I know you know. you've been doing great with that. Yeah, and you know, so, but right now, you know, with, let's say if if you if you broke the day into like fifths, you know, five five equal pieces. Yeah. Okay. I would say like four fifths of the day. I'm feeling really good. It's the one fifth of the day that you start to get everything that you know starts to hit you that you have to really think about. So I think that's good. I think so that's it, good it shows, too. I think that that's important to process. If you didn't get those, what that one fifth, you wouldn't be growing. Exactly, but you know, but you're having you're having a nice calm though. You know, things are yep. you know when you when you're thinking about things on the other four fifths, let's just say. Yeah. You know, you you, you you're like you. It's easy to work through. Yeah. You know, then all of a sudden you get the end of the day or during the day that one part comes up that you have to work a little harder to get through. So right. it's really, it's good. I mean, I, I mean, I think the meditating is, is phenomenal. And then I guess without everything else that's going on astrologically wise, yeah, you put it all, you put it, you try to put it all together and it's there. Yeah. It's definitely you, there. you use the energy of the cosmos to um, mm-hmm. help your meditations, right? The planets definitely speak to you. Absolutely. 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 It's wonderful. John was at my uh, astrology class last Sunday. We had a good time. Oh, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Well, thank you for yes, all your did. support, Jaron. I'm going to have you. Absolutely. Have to, I have to have I'm you on the show. I'm going to let you go and do your thing, and I'll be okay. listening. We're going to have to have okay. him on good the night, show. Okay, good night, Sally. <laughs> bye, John. Have a good bye, week. Bye. We're going to have bye. to have him on the show. What do you think? Yeah, why not? Yeah. John, the number he, one fan. The top fan. I'll get him a Zancuda hat. So, cancers. So I feel like you're your worst enemy. (laughs) I think there's something you're not seeing the truth about, and this full moon lunar eclipse is going to bring in the truth about it. Um, And the reason why I think that is because I've got this card in an upright position, in a uh, reverse position, and I think it's time for you to stop being your own worst enemy, stop persecuting yourself. Um, We've got the King of Cups coming in here, which is um, an energy of a water sign male. Usually the King of Cups for me is either Cancer or Pisces. Um... And it's also followed by a fire sign male. So it could be cancer. Maybe um, for the cancer ladies out there, you may have given up one man for another. And it may have not have been the right decision. Or maybe you're struggling just with some growing pains about it. But I feel like um, you definitely need to go back and revisit whatever decision it is that you recently made. Also, for my cancer um, friends, and this goes for both male and female, this king of wands, which is a fire sign male, um, it could be a Leo, um, Sagittarius, Aries. This person coming in is very strong, and I feel like they're coming in almost to woo you or to get you back. So if it was a situation of, you know, someone choosing someone over another person, the person that you didn't choose is not going away, all right? Um, and for, and I mean that for men and women, because if you are a fire sign male and it's a Pisces, I can't, I'm sorry, if you're a fire sign male and it's a cancer lady that you're after, this reading is also, um, cross reading for you. So right now I'm going to do Pisces, but just know if you're a a fire sign male and there's a Pisces woman involved, you were not chosen. She chose someone over you. But you're coming back into the picture. So for my Pisces friends out there, whatever love decision you recently made, I, I'm sorry, this is cancer. I'm very sorry. It's just the energy is coming in so fast. So for my cancer people out there, whatever decision you recently made romantically, you're going to revisit that. Because if you chose between two people, the person you didn't choose is coming back. If you're, if you're a cancer lady, the person coming back in is a fire sign male. Okay, that's what I'm getting. So for my cancer males out there, this is about looking at the choices you've made in your love and romantic relationships because something gets revisited and the person you didn't choose is coming back in. All right, so now let's go to the next sign, which is going to be Leo. So Dennis should be listening to this Mm -hmm. and his husband. All right, sorry about that confusion. Sometimes it's confusing because things are coming in. So Libra, we're going to get to Libra next after a couple of signs. Angelique, all right? We're doing Leo right now. Okay. My Leo friends, if I forget anybody, just let me know. I feel like Leos are having a great year so far. It's only been 10 days, but they're already killing it. Okay. Leos. 
You're on a journey. Very much like Aries. Okay. Leo, you are turning over a whole new leaf. This is about you coming out of whatever depression, sadness you had, which is very unusual for Leos. Leos are usually like the triumphant lion of the jungle and have the heart of the lion. This is about a journey that you're on where either could have been brought on by a physical death that was around you, maybe the death of a parent or a spouse or, or someone around you, and you had a very difficult time. It's over. You're coming through. You're going to see the light. Um, I feel like there's something also on the career front for you, Leos, with this full moon that brings it a whole new opportunity. So maybe if you've been jobless for a little while or in a job you hate for a little while, something's coming in, some light at the end of the tunnel. But Leos, whatever you've been working on and you've been trying to change, this full moon really brings in a lot of opportunity for you. So just know that. Um, in the romance department, Leo, you're on fire. You're just starting to ignite, but you're going to be having a lot of opportunity. So if you're a single Leo, go out there and, you know, kind of be footloose and fantasy free a little bit. Because I feel like in the dating world, you're going to have your choice of people. Definitely so. Okay. So Leo's all good stuff. A lot of benevolent energy coming in for you. Also, Leo, um, remember to let go of the ego a little bit. I feel like you're letting that lead you. Go into the heart, chest heart-based energy. Get more into the heart of the lion instead of that lead, leading the pack mentality. Okay. Next sign I'm going to try is Virgo. Do we have any Virgos out there? You can call in for the full moon and lunar eclipse. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Virgos, the virgins. Oh, you need some quiet time. These are the same cards that we got for cancer. It's funny. Only in different positions. So what this means to me is, again, Virgo, you're doing too much. Virgos are very industrious, and sometimes they like to pack a lot of stuff into a day. And they also are the sign of service to others. So Virgo, pull it back a little bit, because this is about you now. Um, you're going and giving too much to other people. And the universe is going to make you kind of more introspective in this moon. The universe wants you to really think about your own nurturing. You're nurturing others instead of yourself, and you need to do that. You need to fill up your own vessel, fill up your own cup before you start giving stuff to others. Um, also, Virgos, for any of you Virgos out there that are recently um, tried something new with the new year, a new resolution or a new goal to do with the physical body, something with your health, um, you know, maybe you want to eat differently or quit drinking or quit smoking or something like that. For the Virgos out there, I feel like you have to focus really hard on that because you're allowing other people to determine your success with that goal and it has to be internalized. So go in. The other thing I want to say about Virgo is you have the ability to do much more for your own healing than you're doing. You have a tendency to be looking outside for others to help you heal. And I think the answer isn't just spending quiet time with yourself. So Virgos need to kind of bring it down a notch. You're doing way too much in the world. And now we're up to Libras. Hi, Elaine. Hey, Gina. No, we didn't get to Sag yet. Um, so we're up to Libra. I know Angelique was looking for Libra. I, too, am a Libra. I feel like everything's just so busy lately, very frenetic. So, okay. Let's see what we got for my Libras out there. Libras always want balance, you know. I'm just shuffling these cards a little bit more because I got a couple times the same cards, which is fine. It's what the world wants, universe wants. Okay, Libras. Ah, Libra, new beginnings. Oh, I believe that because I have some stuff coming up that's going to be absolutely fantastic in my life that I can't talk about yet. Okay, Libra. You've got new beginnings. I feel, Libras, if you just recently ended a partnership of any kind, whether that was a business partnership, romantic partnership, friendship, you were supposed to do that because I feel like this person may have been a thief in the night. Um, sometimes Libras try to be so balanced that they see the other side more than what's real. So just know that I think that was true in this case. Whoever is parting from your life, let them go. Let them go. This person was not above board or trustworthy for you. And I feel like they were supposed to leave. There's almost like a protection that this person has left. Um, if for those of you who it was a romantic partnership, this person was not 100% on your side. 
And what I mean by that was there was some kind of an interference. And when I see interference in a relationship, I just see the energy of interference. It doesn't necessarily mean an affair or anything like that. It could just be a meddling neighbor or a meddling mother-in-law or someone that, you know, interferes with the couple and your partner doesn't always defend you or speak well of you. And that's the energy that I'm getting here. So whoever is coming away from your life or falling away, just know that it's almost a protection of the universe in this full moon lunar eclipse energy. That person was not meant to spend time in your energy. Um, they are not 100% good for you and their agenda doesn't match yours. So if anybody out there can confirm that that's happening for them that's a Libra, I'd really appreciate it because that was really, really strong energy that came in. That somebody out there is, you know, let, let the person go. Let them go. Might be painful for you, but really let them go. Yeah, do you find that... Um that Librans, they get taken advantage of through, like, friendship a lot. Like, I, like I have, yeah. like, a, like I have a handful of Libra friends just because they're so nice and friendly. <laughs> I'm and, a Libra. And goofy and cool. You know, they just have, like, I love them. Yeah. And I just feel like, um, like, every once in a while, <laughs> they'll be the sign that says, yeah, I really thought this person was a great friend and I and I put myself completely into their life, and then they got me in the end. Right. Like, and it's so weird. And how there's it a just, reason it, for that. It, it always seems to happen to the Libra people, and it, yeah. like, it couldn't happen to, mm -hmm. like, you know, m some of the more harsh signs. It has to be these, couldn't like... Couldn't happen to an Aries. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it couldn't... No offense, I'm Aries. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are just Like, kidding. it couldn't happen Don't to, like... Show. Yeah, like, just... It's sad that it happens to the Libra people. Well, I'll tell you why that is. Because Libras um, are all about balance. But the thing is, what Libras, a lot of Libras don't understand until you become really involved, right? It was AKA go through crap. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, um, Libras always want, to want balance. So what they do is they seek balance in others. And, you know, they, they don't want conflict. They won't want to rock the boat. So they have to make everybody... Uh, feel good and be balanced and we're going to be we're going to go in and we're going to be the diplomat that fixes this so in doing that they forget themselves and what happens is the, the actual lesson for Librans is you're supposed to go within and find your balance but we spend our whole life trying to get balance from others and it never works that way hmm. so that's why that happens because yeah. we it's go to friendships and partnerships to make us balanced and then we're wonky so let's pick uh, three cards for Libra okay We've got the King of Pentacles, Librans. You have a Capricorn male around you. <laughs> okay, Librans, you've got Capricorn male around you. And I feel like there's some kind of a partnership that um, it hasn't decided whether or not it's going to be permanent. Well, nothing in this world is permanent, of course. But it hasn't decided whether it's going to be long term or just kind of you guys are hanging out together. Um, this Capricorn male, whatever it has to do with this Libra, I have to tell you, the Capricorn male, the issue that he's having where he's a little conflicted is that you are not traditional. And Capricorns are very traditional, very into structure, very into don't change anything, don't throw out my easy chair, I love it. You know, that's a cap. So the, Lib the Libra energy that you are exhibiting is very different than anything he's been around before. So he's kind of hesitating a little bit. I think this will all work out, but Librans just know that you've got a Capricorn male around you. For the Libran men, I'm going to tell you right now that there is, an, is a Libran woman coming in who wants to bring balance to your life. So Libran males, you've got a Libran woman hanging around. I feel like she's on the outskirts of your life right now or somewhere, you know, like a friend of a friend or someone you've seen out a few times. She's going to come in closer into, from this eclipse. Yeah, definitely. And Libra women, man, this Capricorn guy, he really likes you, but he's like kind of getting a little, little squirrely. So, you know, you want to maybe have a conversation with him about um, live and let live, let your free flag fly sometimes, Cappy, and don't be so rigid. Yeah. Do you <laughs> find that Capricorns move like, especially men, they move like extremely slow? Well, they're really earthy. They're, they're very earthy. Yeah. And it's funny because a lot of times air signs will be attracted to the earth signs for that reason because, you know, we were talking about Gemini before and how flighty sometimes they can be um, in a good way. And the um, and they'll be really attracted to a very um, strong, steady Capricorn male, but it never works out because the Capricorn energy doesn't like the butterfly, you know. They want, they want you know, the, uh, the raven to just stay by them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The stability. Right, exactly. 
But for Libra, that's the uh, reading. So Libras, I'm curious to see if anybody's got any Capricorn people out there. So Pauline McClintman from Scotland. She's a Virgo. Oh, Pauline, we already did Virgo. You can watch it back. But how are things in Scotland? That is so exciting. I was just watching Outlander last night. Oh, nice. That's the closest I'll ever come to Scotland. Well, you never know. <laughs> I could always do an astrology course there, you know. Um, but uh, Pauline, the Virgo energy was um, something about habits. I remember now. Uh, you know, all my readings are taking together. care of yourself before yeah, taking, taking care of, care of everyone Thank else. Thank you, Sally. You're I welcome. Need you so much. You're welcome. I love Sally. <laughs> Sally is the best co-pilot I've ever had <laughs> in my podcast radio show. Of Thanks. course, she's the only co-pilot I've ever had. that you've ever had. Yeah. So what are we up to? What comes after Libra? Scorpio. Oh my gosh, I'm getting intense already with the Scorpio energy. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio moon, so I can make fun of Scorpios. Okay. The old Scorpio, I love you, I love you, I love you. You're dead to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it's true. Because I'm, I'm Scorpio rising, and I actually do that all the time. Yeah, me too. I'm a Scorpio <laughs> yeah. moon. It's like, like, I'm like, I'm like this, I'm so for you. You're so important to me. I, yeah, I, you're, why, you're haven't, why haven't you died yet? <laughs> right. You're dead to me. I love you, I love you, I love you, you're dead to me. Okay. So, Scorpions, my little Scorpies. Um, this full moon is actually affecting me a lot because my chart, I have so many planets between 20 and 25 degrees that I'm surprised I have not spontaneously combusted as I have sat in the studio tonight. But anyway, so this is about balance, Scorpios. And one of the things that this full moon will bring in, especially with the eclipse, is truth. Um, it's an energy of truth. And... Scorpions don't always like the truth. Um, they spend a tremendous amount of time trying to bury the truth in the dirt. <laughs> no offense, Scorpios. Um, <laughs> no <but> offense. <laughs> <laughs> so when the truth comes out, Scorpions don't really like it. They'd rather just kind of like, you know, sting it with their tail and make believe it didn't happen. But there's going to be truth coming out in this, um, this energy of the lunar eclipse. And what I can tell you, Scorpios, is that this is also about your money. Okay, so if there's anything where you've been squirreling money away, you know, sometimes we hide money from our spouses because, you know, we want to do something and they'll tell us we can't. So then we're like, haha, I saved the money anyway. You know, that kind of thing, um, which I don't recommend. But I'm just saying we do that. So Scorpius, this is something about hidden money. This is about maybe money that you put away and didn't tell someone about. And now you're going to use it to buy something you really want. This is also about you coming clean about something that actually ends up being a reward when you tell someone how you really feel or something that really occurred. It's not as uh, tragic as you think. So come clean, Scorpio, because this is the energy to do it. And there's money there. You know, if for those of the Scorpios out there that are kind of keeping money issues from a, from a partner or a business partner or a spouse or whatever, it's not as bad as you think. There is money there. There's abundance there. It just hasn't come yet. So if things look a little bit uh, difficult right now for you in your money sector, that that does play out okay. Just be really honest about it. Don't try and hide anything. And by all means, don't try and do anything that's not, you know, um, legitimate or honest. That being said, I also feel like there's an emergency. I don't know, maybe you have an emergency fund put away and, and this gets tested and, and maybe you had money put away to do something and then an emergency comes and you have to use it. You don't really want to say you have it. Say you have it. Uh, this is about being tr totally truthful about your finances and something that happens that happens very quickly that makes you reveal this. Um, and in the end, it becomes a reward. It becomes good for you. So just know that coming in. Okay. Um, oh, Pauline says it's midnight in Scotland. Oh, nice. I love that. I think you might have already had the full moon over there, Pauline. How did you hear about us? I'm so excited that I have someone on the phone from Scotland. Very cool. We have to have her on the show. So um, <laughs> we're going to have everybody just on the fly show. Over. We're going to need a bigger studio. So um, Scorpions, just know whatever the money situation that happens that's revealed in this full moon, it could also be that your spouse has money hidden and you find it and you're angry. Don't be. Do, be grateful for something like that. So something come, is revealed to do with money, Scorpio. Okay. Next sign is going to be Sagittarius. Sagittarians are probably out at a party. They're not. Uh, some, oh, Gina says me and Sally are perfect together. I know. I think she's my soul sister. And she's got a really cool scarf on. Yeah, my my kid made it, my son. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you. So um, we need them because it's like four below zero in the studio. I bring a heater. Yes, I knew that it was the, that the, that the 
the heating was system was broke today. So I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm they not probably make brought it. in so much food on the Let's Eat show that the heat went off. They probably had, had like Maybe. sternos here. It smelled stuff. like French fries in here when I came in. That's I thought onions. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to request that in my next contract that I want, like, no smell in the studio. Yeah. Oh, wait, I don't have a contract. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so funny tonight. Yeah. Okay, so Saggies, what are we doing with you guys? Saggies love the party. I'm a Sag rising, so I have the intensity of Scorpio, and I have the social uh, uh, outgoingness of Sag. So I figured that just makes me a really intense partier. What's your rising sign? Um, Sag. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, Saggies, what are we doing with you? What is the full moon saying? Ooh, Sagges. <gasps> you have a partnership coming in. Look, Sagges. This is new love. Marriage. Nice. This is actually the marriage card. Maybe there's a proposal coming in for Sagges. So, Sagges, you've got this beautiful card of union with the sun card. So, something is definitely brewing for you, Sagittarians. You've definitely got something in the love department, like, on fire. So, what I will tell you, though, is go slow. Don't rush into anything because Sagittarians can be really impulsive. So um, just know there is someone coming in for you. Sagis, you are on fire with the love. Love, 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 love. Um, but keep your head on the ground. Keep yourself a little grounded because this could really run away with you. So, um, yeah, definitely new beginnings. I feel like this is completely new and unexpected coming in. Um, My, do you have like any like when, like in the next like month? I was or? just going to say, I think this is happening like when Uranus starts to touch that point in the sky. Um, so that's going to probably be like Wednesday, Thursday. You're going to feel some feel us. Could be a few days before or after. But I think this week you have a chance meeting with somebody and it's like, whoa, really big attraction. Big attraction. Nice. I wish I was a Sag. Like just for this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Aaron from Texas. We've got we've got you guys from all over. I love that. Really do love that. Okay. So now we are doing Capricorn. Capricorn. I feel Capricorn I feel is like the most busiest sign right now for things happening in your life because there's so much there's like a we call it a conglomeration, which is the unofficial term um, of planets in Capricorn. So anything and everything could happen to you guys, especially with this full moon lunar eclipse across your sky. Um, I would basically put a seatbelt on, stay home and get provisions. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> What is wrong with me tonight? Um, no, Cappy's. <laughs> Get provisions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, cheese whiz, Fritos. So, Caps, this is you know, like your life is changing, and you can't stop it. There's going to be no status quo for you, Capricorn. So let's see what the three cards we're going to pull, and then I'm going to do some world energy while we have time. Okay? The only one who called in today was John and Dennis. Huh. Okay, Capricorns. Wow. This is all about you. And I really feel that uh, these transits that are coming in, like I said, is all about energy in your own life, etc. The King of Pentacles comes up, and that's the Capricorn card for me, which just means there's so much of this Capricorn energy. Capricorn energy is steady. It's ambitious. It's climbing. It wants to get to the top of the mountain. But the problem or the, 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 the issue, let's say, with that is Capricorn gets so fixated on the top of the mountain that they forget that there's a, another source of energy larger than they that is actually getting them to the top of the mountain. So Capricorns in this beautiful full moon energy where we have the moon in Cancer and the lunar eclipse coming in to illuminate the heart-based energy, try and go into your heart, which is very hard for a Capricorn. They really are in the material world quite a bit. But if you can go down into your heart energy and really feel like what you really get a handle on what you value in your life, then all the changes, the transcendence, and the energy of that that's coming in will pull you where you really want to go because now you're manifesting what's heart-based instead of the material world. Sorry, instead of the material world. So that's my best advice to Capricorns in this energy because this is a year of change. It's a year where you can almost get, feel like things are out of control and you're being pulled along. Very uncomfortable for Capricorns to feel that way. If you can get into your heart energy and truly come into what you value, so that you are co-creating it with the source higher than you and bring that energy in through the heart, it's going to be a completely different experience and not an uncomfortable one. You'll find yourself really manifesting and creating the life that you really desire. At the end of this, I see celebration. So these next couple of weeks for you are very important. Don't 
negate anything. Sometimes Capricorns can be so rigid, they say, yeah, no, not that. And once they make a decision, that's the decision. Be more flexible. Be open. Let the energy that comes through the heart be open energy so that you're really observing and exploring wherever life can take you and know that the possibilities are unlimited with the connection through spirit. All right, so that's Capricorn. Sorry to get so serious on you, but you guys love it. You're Cappies. So... <laughs> So those are 12 signs of the zodiac. I hope it didn't, um, didn't um, confuse anyone. <laughs> Gina just said, am I confused? I am married. No, Gina, maybe you're going to reignite, aren't you? And Jack's supposed to go on a second honeymoon. Yeah, you said that. Well, you better book it, baby, because somebody's coming in to love you. <laughs> 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 what is, uh, Gina, what is Jack? I don't know what. Um, I, don't, I just don't remember. I think I knew at one point. He's, I don't know, he still so I don't remember what it is. So now I'm going to go to my angel cards, and I want to pick, um, I'm going to pick cards for the world, for the universal energy for all of us, because, um, let's see which ones I'm picking here. This is the ones I want. Yeah. Because I feel like there's so much, you know, going on in the world. I feel like this past week especially, we had so much stuff going on with environmental stuff and... Um, things on the other side of the world and all this stuff. So I'm going to pick, I'm actually going to pick two cards. They're telling me to pick two cards. Um, so let's see what we get and maybe that'll give us all some insight into what we can expect. Gina's already at the travel agent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay. Okay. So at the beginning of the show, I was talking about, you know, heart-based energy and how cancer is a very heart-based energy. It's our home. It's our security. But it's not just home and family and the physical structure of where we live. It's also the home within ourselves and our own heart and our own soul. So the first card that I brought up was acceptance. And it says, see yourself and others through the eyes of the angels with unconditional love and acceptance. In this way, you inspire and lift everyone to their highest potential. And I think that's really indicative of the Cancer full moon coming in, that beautiful heart-based energy. We're supposed to live from our heart. We're not supposed to live from our lower energy, our lower chakras, our anger and frustration. We're supposed to live in love. And I think that's a beautiful message for the universe because if we can use this eclipse, like I was just saying to Capricorns, to really bring the energy in through our heart, we're going to live in a much more loving and love-based environment. Then the second card that we got was focus on service. And this goes hand in hand with what I'm talking about. Your soul desires only to joyfully serve and to swim in a constant stream of bliss. This stream continuously feeds you everything you need. Put your entire focus upon staying in this stream of giving and receiving in every situation and all that you do. And it has a beautiful angel sitting on top of the unicorn. And to me, this is so symbolic of energy that we often think is impossible to achieve, but anything is possible if we believe it. So I'm going to leave that with you tonight and just acceptance and focus on service. And I'm going to implore you all during this beautiful time of the lunar eclipse, the full moon, go outside tonight, wherever you are, whether you're across the world or across town or right here, and just look at that beautiful full moon and let it speak to you. Because it's giving your heart a message, and the message is really one that can propel you forward in your life to all good things. So that's about my message today. And um, we did Taurus, Gina. Oh, uh, Jack's a Taurus. We did Taurus. Oh, how did I not know that? He doesn't seem like a Taurus to me. No, no, not at all. Huh. But, um, but that's the show, and that's pretty much my, my interpretation of the full moon in Cancer. So let, the, let your heart speak to you. Let the moon speak to your heart. And really find out where it is that your heart wants to lead you and try and authenticate that in your life. 